Yeah. Look at me. I went to uni. I didn't use my foundation degree that I got, but when I went to uni, I started a vending machine business. If I didn't start that vending machine business, I wouldn't have had, you know, the confidence to leave my workplace, home to Harringay, and do my own thing. Yeah. Because if I left home to Harringay, I would only have one stream of income. Yeah. Yo, Mr. Euro. So basically, I'm saying that the reason why uni is important, right, or it's good to go to uni because it's not necessarily for that degree that you might get, but it might lead to other things. So a man went to uni to study electronic engineering. This is someone I know, studied electronic engineering, and now they are an investment banker. Yeah. So a man went from an electronic engineering master's degree to a banker. Yeah. This is the shit that happens, right? If I didn't go to uni and study a foundation degree in electronic engineering, yeah, I wouldn't have started that vending machine business, yeah? How many people you know go to uni and start a vending machine business, yeah? But that's me, you put me in an environment and I will, yeah, I'll see if I can, I can make something of this, this environment that I'm in. So anyway, started a vending machine business, yeah? And then from there, I had the confidence and the courage to think to myself, all right, let me leave home to Harringay and do my own thing, right? I've got money coming in from the vending machine business, because at the time I had two vending machines, yeah? Money coming in from the vending machine business, plus I'm um, electrician, so I can get work, right? So I had two streams of income, right? At that point, I said to myself, all right, let me buy a property now, because as far as I knew, although I was a bit ignorant to it, I just thought you always had to have two years worth of earnings as a self-employed person in order to get a mortgage. It's not like that anymore, or it even was never like that, right? That was just a rumor. I thought to myself, whilst I'm still employed at Holmes Harringay, let me get take out a mortgage, right? Because as far as I'm concerned at this moment in time, I will have to wait two years from that point, yeah? So if I waited two years from the age of 24, around November, when I first started looking, yeah? no, how old was I? Yeah, 24, yeah, from the from the time I first started looking, right? I will not have bought that property until, yeah, like a year ago or something like that. Yeah, about a year ago. So, yeah, at the time, I thought to myself, you know what? I've got two streams of income. I'm still um, employed at my workplace. Let me use my earnings to show that I can afford the mortgage because I know I'll be able to afford the mortgage once... Um, I take out the, the mortgage, even if I'm not working at this Holmes Harringay no more, I'll find the fucking money, yeah? even if I have to go back to work or whatever, innit, yeah? but I need to try new things, yeah? I need to try and step out of my comfort zone, innit, yeah? so yeah, I said, let me take out this mortgage, took out the mortgage, bought the house, whatever, planned to resign for the 31st of March, got fired at the end of January, um, shit happens, you know, um, but yeah, so yeah, I got, I got, I got, I got fired from work, but at least I had the property before then. So yeah. So yeah, the point of that story is one thing leads to another. If I didn't go to university, I wouldn't have started the vending machine business. If I didn't start the vending machine business, I wouldn't have had two streams of income to give me the confidence to leave my workplace and beforehand buy a property. Even after that, I even forgot. After I bought this property that I'm in now, I bought a property in Egypt, yeah? Because during the period of time when I weren't working full-time, when I was self-employed, I was getting a bit lazy, yeah? I was living off of my wages, yeah, and my, my savings, yeah? And I thought to myself, well, in 10 months' time, what am I gonna have to show for this? Nothing. Yeah, I had fun. Yeah, it's all nice to wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning every day, but, I have nothing to show for this. So I need to get my ass up and get a job, yeah, because the work has slowed down. Yeah. I need something to show for my time, whatever in it. So I decided to get rid of my money by um buying a property in Egypt. I needed to get rid of it because I needed to remove that safety blanket. Yeah. If I know I've got 10 grand in my account, I will be lazy. If I know I only got 200 pounds in my account, somehow I will just get this drive out of nowhere. Yeah, you go into survival mode. Yeah. And that's the only way really basically to to 
become six well that's the only way to really step out of your comfort zone when you when you're put in survival for me anyway yeah for me everyone's different yeah i'm not saying put yourself in survival mode if yeah if you don't really need to in it but for me i know i'll work harder if i'm thrown in the deep end and i put myself in survival mode yeah so yeah i had to put myself in survival mode i literally spent all my money yeah on that property in egypt i was left with like three four hundred pounds that's the first time in my life since I was 19. Yeah, so when I done that, I was, I think, 24. No, 25. I, t- I had turned 25. So when I turned 25, I already had this property here. But I was still living at my mom's house. And then um, I turned 25 in September. And then I decided to buy the property in Egypt. And I ended up buying it in... December or something like that. I can't remember in it. Yeah. But anyway, I remember. Yeah, it must have been December because I remember in December I had like five hundred pounds my, to my name. The time before that, I had hardly any money to my name. Was when I decided to buy a motorbike and I left myself with like two hundred pounds. Yeah, and I remember that was July, either June or, or July of two thousand and twelve. Yeah, yeah, because that's the year I went on holiday, and that was the year of the Olympics. So yeah. I went into survival mode, yeah? Literally, I remember it was good though, it was good times though, I remember, so I went into survival mode, yeah? And these times I was still getting fired from jobs, you know? Yeah, still getting fired from jobs and I'm in survival mode, yeah? I've got 200 pounds to my name, yeah? But I still ain't taking no shit from no one, innit? Yeah? There's all times that I had my own clients and stuff like that doing work for, innit? Or customers, whatever, innit? And again, that's what I'm saying. When you do one thing, it leads to another, right? I made that, that old video about me riding my R6 down to Islington to go and look at one of my vending machines, right? And I showed some lights up in the ceiling, right, that I installed. So I installed a vending machine in the community centre and I spoke to the managers of the community centre and they said they like the lights that I'm selling. Can I install them? I made a good bit of money off installing lights for them. Then I became their electrician. They were sending me here, sending me there, whatever, in it, yeah? And they had other community centers that they were running. Right? So back in December, so December of 2012, January 2013, Jan- uh, February 2013, I was doing work for them all over the place and doing work for other people. There was times where I would come home from work, maybe relax for about two hours or something, and then hit the road and go and do private work. Or we'll turn up at a job at 7 p.m. at night and not leave till one in the blood clot morning. Yeah, or 12 o'clock at night at least. Yeah, get home at 1.30 and that. Yeah. Go sleep, wake up at 6 p.m., bam, back on the job. Maybe do the same thing the next day. Yeah. Well, good times though, man. Good times, good times, good times, man. But, yeah, man. So, even from that, one thing leads to another. Yeah. I managed to sort of vending machine in the community centre. Then I become... The, the community centre's electrician and they always calling me out to do these jobs here and there and that so yeah can't, you can't knock it man like you fail at one thing but it opens up another door somewhere else yeah like me buying that property in Egypt it's probably a waste of money yeah buying a property in Egypt is a waste of money but if me doing something is giving me that that option or whatever in it, yeah, that excuse to leave the country and, and go elsewhere, that's a good thing. Um, you never know. Man. I've been putting off going to Egypt for a long time. I might go out there and think to myself, why the fuck have Egypt not got this? Right? This basic thing. I don't know where it is. Yeah, because if I knew I'll be out there and I'll be doing that business. But why have Egypt not got this? And I can introduce that to that country and be become a bit like, you know become a successful person whatever in it yeah but as i always say you can't just keep working this nine to five getting up jumping on the train going to this location on the weekends go to the gym go link your bridges go away go check y'all and think that your life is going to get any better you keep doing the same thing you're not going to have any other any any new outcome and if you just become seriously fortunate to stumble across something or whatever in it but yeah if you don't step out of your comfort zone or do something new, you're never going to uh, stumble across anything. Anything new. You're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. The same routine over and over and over again. 
all of them electricians at my workplace, they didn't go to, the only like, one man went to uni, one African man, he was actually a pastor as well, I used to work with him, Peter. Um, he's the only man that had a degree, yeah, he was a, ma he had a master's in electronic engineering, right? They're man at my workplace, they, they, they have no the H and C in this or nothing like that. I stepped out of my comfort zone, I've done something new. I always said, I'm never going to go to uni and study. Well, I did go and study at uni level. And then, um, yeah, started the vending machine business, boom. Um, decided to resign from work. If um, Before that, obviously, buy the property and that, then bought Egypt. One thing leads to another. If I never decided, if I if I never decided to go to uni in the first place, right, I would not be sitting in this house right now. 